Hey guys, it's Philip, and this is the third episode of Z Tapes Hangout, and we are welcoming our favorite band, Joyer, from New Jersey. So hopefully this will be fun. And here is Shane and Nick. And maybe first question, like uh, maybe you can introduce yourself, like what what are you doing now, or what what is your job, or if you study and uh, like. Maybe introduce a little bit yourself. Cool. Um, do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm Nick Sullivan uh, from Joyer. Uh, I guess I play a little bit of everything in Joyer. And uh, yeah, currently unemployed, but uh, hopefully that'll change soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Shane Sullivan. We're, we're brothers and um i also play a little bit of everything um right now i'm in college uh in boston studying at emerson college and yeah so that's where i am right now that's why we're in separate places but yeah oh cool uh so maybe maybe the first kind of topic i already discussed with the first word but what is the dynamic of being brothers and having a bad is it working for you or is it you really causing trouble or? I think it like surprisingly works really well. I mean, I feel like we have a uniquely like good relationship, I guess, as brothers. Like it doesn't ever really make us like bicker or anything. I feel like we have a good understanding of each other and like what we like to do musically and we're into like the same stuff so it works well like with writing and recording and stuff like that i don't know would you say yeah. that <laughs> everyone asks like oh you guys are you guys like oasis you're gonna start hating each other but uh hasn't happened yet it makes it pretty easy i mean <clears throat> a lot of times we live in the same place so it's easy to get together especially during covid uh yeah and we like all the same things like you said so it's like supernatural and easy just to like work together yeah that's just great to hear um so so how did the joyer started like how, how did you came up with the idea of having a band like that yeah i think uh so i was in this band like throughout high school uh and then like towards like the end of its life uh shane was kind of like playing with us for a while so uh then that like ended so i didn't really have any kind of like music thing going on and i was used to playing with shane already so we were just like this would be so easy if just me and you started making music together because uh like we lived together and everything uh so it just went from there i guess and then when we first like started making music i don't think we like really imagined like actually like doing anything with it besides just like putting an album out on Bandcamp. Um, but it was like so much fun that we just kept going. Yeah, I think we both like gr gravitated towards each other to want to make music just because like we had a lot of like the same interests and like direction that we wanted to make music in that was like different from what we were playing in before that. So yeah, I, I guess just like our common like interest in music and like taste in music i guess <laughs> yeah so so basically the first thing you did together was feel or did you do like what, what was that like something that you've been working like from the start on or was it something that was kind of polished later and um yeah well i guess so when we were in like my old band that was like something completely different it was like turned into like this weird like instrumental experimental band that we would have like 15 minute songs and things like that uh and then after that i think when shane and i started making music we didn't really know exactly where we wanted to go um and it just kind of came naturally like our like self-titled release that's not even like a real album was like the first songs we ever wrote together so it kind of just like went from there and kept going yeah so so besides Joyer, you don't have any other 
musically, right? In no, play. not yeah. right now, at least. <laughs> and it, it, was it like uh, when you started like playing together? Like, did you like decide like, okay, we will keep going with this only, or was it like something that you were like, maybe we will have fun for some time and then we'll see? Yeah, I think at first, yeah, it just was something to do. And then we realized like how convenient it was, I guess, just like living with someone who, I don't know, if you're able to like collaborate with and like, just like out of boredom, we could always just like play some stuff or like play around with, yeah, making music and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I would like to do other projects and stuff, but like, I don't know, I feel like this is, it's worked out well and it's been like convenient, I guess. Yeah, we didn't even like expect to even play shows at first because um, in the very beginning, uh, we were making music and then another friend of ours was making like similar type of music. Uh, so like our first like five shows, we wouldn't even play a full set. We'd play like half a set of our music where our friend would play drums for us and then a half a set of his music where we would play like the backup instruments for him. So like it really like we I guess we didn't expect to like do anything like even play shows we kind of just had to like half ass everything we did um but yeah now it's more organized I guess I would say so what did change like what makes you persuaded like okay this is this is what we're going for or we should I guess keep going. just liked people were just telling us that they liked our music, I guess. And um, I guess in like my older bands, uh, I was always really like, I was really young and everybody in the band was really young and I guess people didn't really like care or anything. But uh, with Joyer, we got a pretty good response. So we were like, oh, okay, I guess we can make some more music. Yeah, I also feel like when we like started playing shows more regu regularly, we, just like had a lot of fun with that and it was like something to look forward to and I, I feel like it definitely I don't know got us to take it more seriously maybe but yeah just like playing shows and all of that was like so fun so we just like I guess it kind of like built from there so so what is the dynamic now when you are like in separate places do you still like write something together or do you like kind of leave it for later when you will be together or what is I, yeah oh sorry no, i find uh when i'm at school we don't really do much i mean maybe I, i can't speak for nick but i don't do a whole lot but then as soon as i come back it's like it like all like pours out just because like i haven't been doing anything musically so i'm like itching to do it so much so i feel like whenever i come back from school i do like a whole lot of writing just because yeah i don't have like a lot of instruments and stuff up here yeah for me it's like i guess it goes both ways i mean for sun to flies i wrote like maybe like six songs for like the like two weeks after shane left uh to go back to school and um then I think I like went up and visited him and I was like look at all this stuff that I did and then we kind of like put a pin in it until he came back and like really fleshed those things out but yeah I guess for the most part uh we don't really do much when Shane's not here I guess if I have some kind of like inspiration like then I'll like try to lay something down in garage band but other than that uh yeah it's pretty uh like a down period I guess Yeah, so so how are you handling the situation that when you cannot play shows because yeah that's that's what made you maybe change or the view on on Joyer. so so how do you see that now like do you think that it it is hurting you your project or i mean it definitely sucks like <laughs> i definitely miss it a lot um i don't I don't know if it's like hurting it. It's just like, I feel like we were still productive regardless and like quarantine and lockdown gave us more time to just like write more. So I guess it just like shifted focus more into writing rather than like 
practicing or like playing out yeah i think it's really hard to say because i guess we got our biggest like growth in terms of like engagement with like people uh during quarantine but that was just because our like newest album came out then so it's hard to say like would it have would we have gotten like more engagement if we were playing shows i don't really know um yeah we did have to have a tour get canceled and it was like our first big tour so i don't know if that would have changed things or not so so how do you see the album like it's it's been out for almost uh, it will be long actually since summer so yeah a couple of months so how do you see it now or how do you see the reception of it or like did it met your expectations or what is your take um yeah i think i mean i was really happy with how people seemed to like it. i think philip you were like a huge help just like getting it out there and having people hear it so that was amazing and yeah it we were nervous just about releasing stuff i don't know yeah it's weird it's hard to know with like the pandemic and stuff like how things are gonna go but i don't know yeah it seemed like i was happy i'm just happy if anyone listens to it really like that makes me excited i guess yeah i guess we also didn't really know what to expect because this is like kind of our first like real album uh because it was like the first one that someone else recorded for us and uh first one that i feel like we were like pretty much happy with so yeah i guess we didn't really know what to expect at this point it feels like um kind of like super old just because yeah it came out a while ago and also um we were like sitting on it for so long before it came out that um i feel like uh it feels like such like a i don't know also being in quarantine like time moves so slowly that it feels like it came out so long ago but i'm happy that people are still listening to it i yeah like shane said i really didn't know what to expect so so do you like still plan like playing shows maybe with this album later next year or actually, actually this year probably maybe in fall but like is it is it something that you are now focusing more on newer stuff or do you still like count that album as something that you want to like maybe progress or it's yeah it's like it's funny that like just like not knowing when shows are going to come back mm -hmm. i feel like we thought it like what if shows come back and like we don't even get a chance to like yeah like play shows on this album because like it's so long in advance so i guess it depends because yeah we definitely have stuff new stuff coming up but yeah i wish we could play songs off this album we did like one like little live stream where we got to like try some of them out but yeah i can't imagine even if like we have new releases come out before we even play a show again that we wouldn't play songs of this album because i feel like we play songs that we like released in like 2017 still i think we like to mix it up a lot so i can't imagine that we wouldn't like put this into the live rotation even if like two or three albums even came out we'd probably still come back to this one just because i don't know we like to switch it up sure cool uh so like what what is your plan for this year like do you do you plan to record new music put maybe singles out or like in general like what is your plan for this year i guess this is a good place to say that we actually are already done tracking an entire new album that's being mixed right now so i imagine that will probably come out this year uh other than that um there's a lot of comps that are coming out that we've submitted to um so yeah hopefully you guys like people get to hear a lot of stuff from us this year cool so even like i know that you released the benefit compilation to uh support uh bernie and so what do you think about that like connecting 
like music with something that is a little bit political or kind of not it's less like okay benefit compilation means uh, it's usually like for some charity organization or someone you know in help but not really a political organization or or figure so so what is your take on that like how do you see that yeah uh that was super fun to put together um i think that yeah when i was putting it together together i didn't even like think of it as being like divisive in a way or it didn't really like matter to me i guess because um i like a lot of those uh artists i like know personally and i know that they liked bernie so i felt like comfortable like reaching out to people um to me i think that if you have like a platform that people will like hear what you're saying i think it's important to say things that you believe in i guess so uh i really backed bernie super hard and was hoping that he would uh get nominated so i wanted to help any way i can i was like well this is probably like the best way i can do it uh so yeah i yes. guess i didn't really um think about any kind of uh I guess alienating people who didn't like him because I guess at that point in time it didn't really matter to me. Yeah. I mean, I just think that it's important. Like obviously we have like a super tiny fan base, but like no matter what, like if you have, yeah, like any sort of platform to like make use of it and like shed light on issues that are important and that like we care about. Like, yeah, so with like the Bernie thing, I feel like if people weren't into that, like, didn't really matter. Like, I'd rather people who aren't supporters of him, like, not even, like, listen to our stuff. Like, yeah, I like having, like, a close tie to that and, like, be being able to, like, I don't know, help in any way for, like, sh social issues or stuff like that. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> so, so do you think in general, like, music should be more focusing on that like or like musicians like trying to use their platform to help for example even political campaigns or even in general more donate money to charities or like make some more kind of impact in this sense yeah i think so even if it's not in like a monetary way just like addressing issues and talking about things i think is really important because Especially with music, I think that um, with like bigger artists, it really sets like a trend for the way people act and think and dress. So if like bigger artists are talking about issues that are important to them, I think that uh, people are more likely to follow along with it mm -hmm. as opposed to I guess just like watching someone talk about it on the news. Maybe uh, people can't really some people might have trouble like engaging with it, but if it's someone that they like look up to or respect or think is cool, think uh, why not like talk about things you're interested in. I'm, I feel like it's kind of like a cop out to be worried about, I guess, like upsetting people uh, when like addressing certain issues or just being like super uh, passive about things. I think um, even if you're not like straight up raising money because i know like people are trying to make a living i think it's uh it's important to at least address issues that you're passionate about yeah like i i almost feel like it would be like a waste of like the platform to not do something good at good with it or like promote something that helps people or like raise awareness for certain issues and yeah i mean i just yeah i always admired other musicians that do that too and yeah i think it's important yeah not to be like preachy or to say that's like all you're about but i think that it is good to just like make sure this stays in people's minds if something like comes up like that have you met with some kind of reaction from fans that you shouldn't be like kind of promoting this or or talking about this um not really we yeah. really need to have i guess if anyone like thought that way they haven't said it to us so pretty much it's been yeah we haven't had any problems cool 
Okay, it's it's admiring and actually I really like that you did the compilation because I know how hard it is <laughs> to do compilations and manage all the people and kind of get all the attention. So it was really nice. And so do you plan anything like that in the future? Is it something that you want to maybe try another time? Um, it was fun to like put together, but it was definitely like a huge project. Like I have so much respect for you putting out all those compilations. Um, I mean, I definitely would be involved in like, I don't know, some ways like maybe asking like other artists that I know to like help out someone who's organizing it. But I don't think I'll like take the reins on one anytime soon, but I wouldn't rule it out completely. Cool. So maybe talk more about your music and so what what is the source of your inspiration like biggest like where do where do you look for it? Um, you could take that one. Shane. <laughs> I feel like I don't know, definitely from like a lot of different things. Like obviously, a lot of uh, we're inspired by a lot of like bands we like and stuff. But I also Nick and I are really into like movies. We I'm studying film and he studied film. So I think that weirdly enough, like plays a part of it. I don't know if that sounds stupid, but definitely inspired by that or like books and other stuff. I feel like inspiration for me, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't come just from music, but from all things that I like. Yeah, but I, I agree with that, but also it is like a huge like music does play a huge factor in it i think we're both like huge like music fans and have like record collections and stuff so um definitely comes from a lot of places but also there's just like i don't know so many like music is such a huge part of our life that uh, i think that's why we really want to make music it's just so many different artists and uh albums that inspire us that uh just made us like wanted to make music i guess so if you talk about the movies and i know that you mentioned that in a couple of articles it was about you that you are huge fans like how did came alive like how did you become like such huge movie fans um i guess our dad was really into like um kind of like cults like really uh like low budget horror movies and um so we grew up watching like the original like universal monster movies from like the 30s and 40s and 50s and from there i don't know i guess we just kind of discovered it on our like branched off from there and got into like art movies and like foreign films um but i think our parents were really the spark of that like they're i mean they showed us like all bands same way with like music they showed us like the beatles and um a bunch of like punk bands and from there we kind of i guess like branched off and found our own interest and things like that but it all really stems back from them yeah it's nice having like a common interest in our family like i feel like we all oh like yeah they showed us everything that they liked and we kind of gravitated towards it and now like we'll show our mom movies that we like and she'll like watch with us and like enjoy it. It's it's nice, I guess. <laughs> so I guess your family is supportive of your music or in, in general, right? Or? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just super supportive. Yeah, in all, in all ways, which is really nice. Our and, mom's been to like, a lot of our shows even if it's in like some like weird basement somewhere some, a lot of times she'll come out and be like the only like i guess like adult person there but it's cool like i'm happy to have her there it's fun to uh show her our music and stuff sometimes i guess she thinks it's kind of weird but still is like okay that's what you're gonna do awesome so yeah i'd say that she's really supportive yeah so you never felt like kind of ashamed or kind of, you know, like nervous that, you know, you have a parent watching you play? Definitely not. But uh, I guess with like our extended family, um, 
uh we never really like talk about that like side of our lives i guess so it's kind of i mean we're not like not close but also i feel like there's like a certain side that like your extended family sees and then a certain side that like your friends see so uh when they'll like come out the shows every once in a while and it's kind of feels like a weird like blending of world so that's a little nerve-wracking but with our mom i guess we're super close like i don't like filter myself in front of her or anything so it's not weird to have her come out i almost feel more comfortable when she's there yeah in the audience that's great that's great to hear so like the Oh, interesting to movies is it something that you want to pursue later on like is it something that you want to be involved in or is it just like from fan point of view um yeah i mean that's like what i'm studying so hopefully yeah it'll lead to like a career i would like that um i don't really know what i want to do right now but I really like studying it and yeah I, I guess a big part of it is just being a big like movie fan so yeah hopefully it's a part of my life yeah same as me I guess uh I only graduated recently so I'm still kind of figuring out where exactly I want to be um but hopefully it'll be something in like the like video or film world but uh don't know exactly where yet So do you have like maybe top three uh, directors or that kind of, uh, or maybe films even? I'll let you take that. Uh, That's a hard question. <laughs> yeah, I know. It changes a lot. Um, or maybe you, just recommend something that is recent or something that really struck you maybe even last year. Um, it's tough because Yeah, like movies haven't been like a thing in a while. The last thing that like I really loved um, and blew me away was First Cow by Kelly Reichardt. She makes really great movies. And I love how like, honestly, there's like an intersect with like indie music in her movies because she like works with like a lot of our favorite bands, which is awesome. Like Yola Tango scored one of her movies and stuff. So that was like, probably the last really really good movie that i saw which is kind of sad because there's like nothing out anymore yeah i guess for me um this year this movie days came out by um this taiwanese uh based director uh named simon lang uh and i guess he's a pretty big inspiration because his movies are super like slow and like kind of not dramatic and I guess we try to like put that in our music in a way uh like this most recent one that came out this year i think there's only like three lines of dialogue or something in the whole movie but his stuff is amazing like definitely check that out if you haven't seen it before so so did it change for you during pandemic the way you pursue like movies or do you do watch less maybe more or maybe different movies I feel I like it was more. the same for me. Oh, well, you uh, said more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like being home and like not really having anything else to do besides like watch movies. I felt like I watched like, like yeah, probably more than I used to, which was nice. I don't know yeah, what yeah. you're going to say. Yeah, I would say it was like the same because when I went to school, I was still commuting from home for like uh, the second half of it. So it wasn't really different for me. I guess the only difference is that I watched like a lot of movies with Shane this time. But other than that, I feel like I watched like so many movies and uh, uh, it didn't really like change while I was in quarantine at all. Do you keep any movie journal or do you keep track? What do you watch? Yeah, uh, have you heard of Letterboxd? We're on that. It's no. like a It's like an online like social media movie journal thing. Uh, so okay. yeah, we'll like log it on there. I think I watched in 2020 like something like over 200 movies or something like that. We're going to <laughs> come off as like such pretentious nerds, I feel yeah. like, but <laughs> yeah. It's it's, yeah, it's fun. So do you do you try to watch also European movies or Yeah, 
I feel like I never really like think of the movie uh in terms of i guess like genre or where it's from if it just like looks good or is recommended to me i'll just like watch it so definitely like we watch a lot of foreign movies or european movies uh things like that so have you ever seen something from slovakia (laughs) all right probably not Um, oh or maybe Czech, czech republic yeah I know um, Daisy's that movie, oh, um, That's a good which one. I love. That's like one of my favorite movies. I don't think I've seen anything yet, like Definitely. recently. I have to send you something. something. Definitely. There, are not, there are not many movies, like the, maybe the cinematography in Slovakia is more kind of makes, makes sense for the local audience, because even like kind of topics and even just the themes are kind of more more things that are present or kind of people can connect with it when they know what is it about or and and even the quality is not you know like not the best but definitely like Czech movies were always better and even the quality was kind of higher there and it was because of this the movie school in Prague which is like kind of one of the most popular ones in like kind of central europe which makes sense. i'd love to see some slovakian movies. yeah you should send us some recommendations i would oh love yeah I, I have some dvds so uh i have to kind of maybe read them off <laughs> uh, because i guess it would be impossible to kind of watch it but Maybe I'm not sure how it works on Netflix and kind of dead streaming services because then sometimes they have like kind of European movies, but I'm, I'm not sure if they are just offering to European customers. Hmm. But I don't know how, how that works. Yeah. Yeah, because even my wife, she's into movies. She even did some like kind of course where she kind of learned how to shoot, uh, like kind of shoot that small or short uh, video so so we kind of watch always a lot of movies and it, we like art movies or kind of you know like in the uh, US scene like Sundance and more indie stuff cool. yeah but it's it's really hard to get it here in Slovakia because there is no kind of like usually legal way to obtain the movie so you can you just have to kind of search it on torrents or something oh right yeah that's awesome though that you're that's the reason why we wanted to go to south by southwest because there is also like the movie kind of part of the festival so yeah maybe to sundance one day (laughs) So, so have you ever shot any movie or have you made any? Yours? Yeah, uh, I guess for school, like people made movies. Shane's are always like way better than mine. I'm more of an I, actor than a. I don't think <laughs> that's true, but I mean, yeah, I just have made stuff for school. I'm like not really good at it. Um, yeah, but it's been fun. Um, I wish. I was more like, I don't know, had more of the skills to be able to to make stuff on my own. But hope I don't know, maybe one day. I think that we have like more like niche uh, skill sets where like I'm usually the one like editing the movie than um, really uh, like taking charge and like directing it. And Shane has, I feel like you're kind of an editor too, right? Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't even call myself that. <laughs> um, yeah, just figuring stuff out, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you thought about like uh, doing more videos for your music or like having more kind of video output connected to your music? Yeah, I would love that. I mean, I definitely love like visual aspects of like music like and like pairing them with visuals and stuff 
yeah i think our mindset has been like we have so many like friends in like the video field that we kind of like when uh they make stuff with us or for us better because something about making a video for ourselves i don't know feels like weird to us i like i guess like invite other people in to collaborate like we have one video for like a past release that Shane's friend made and actually his friend is also making another video uh, for us for class that we might use. So I think it's more fun to like collaborate on those type of things. So is is a dream for you to score a movie? That would be awesome. Yeah. We actually, there is like some short film that played in like some film festivals in New York City that used our music, but we didn't actually like score it. They just uh, took a bunch of our songs and put it in. Cool. But, uh, to like deliberately, like, I guess, write music for a film, that would be amazing. I, I would love to try that. Yeah, I would love that. I don't know if I, I would be like that good at it, but that would be like so fun. Maybe, maybe one day we'll see. Yeah. No. You scored your own film once, Shane, and that came out so good. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. It's like it, it, it's less pressure doing it for like myself rather than someone else because I don't know. I, I'm not that confident in my ability. So like if I do it for myself, I there's like less pressure and I if it's bad, I don't even care. <laughs> So, for example, back to your music for now, but when you compare like your Peel album and your Sun Into the Flies album, like for you, what is the bigger difference there or the like kind of, or what is it when you compare them? I, I, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, you, you go. You no, go. no, no, go, go, go. <laughs> I think Sun Into the Flies was more, um, deliberate i guess uh we demoed the whole album before we actually went to go record it with someone and by that point we got a lot better at recording ourselves so we had more control over it and then being in the studio like we had like total control over it because we had brad uh the engineer like help us with everything I suppose the sun to flies i guess it was just like what can we do to make it sound good as it goes yeah oh yeah for peeled it was like what can we do to make it sound not terrible because we just had like a horrible mic so that was like kind of like fighting against the uh lo finess and like the lack of skills as opposed to sons of flies was like what can we incorporate into this now that we have like control over it we can do whatever we want yeah i i do feel like between every like album there is like some growth growth that goes on like I always find myself l liking a new album like way more than the last one and then that like fades away and then I'll be like wait I want to put this new album out because it's like so much better and I like listening to it more yeah when we but get commented on like our music I always feel like I'm always like yes but that one's cool but the next one is going to be even better like trust me like I don't know, kind of just like always looking to the future, I guess. Cool. So one maybe last thing I want to ask you about the, the newer album is the cover art. I really like it. Like what is the inspiration by that or how did that came up? That was a painting our grandma did. She She's like a painter and I don't know where we, I think we just found it like digging through like her like old paintings and it's like in our house. And yeah, I think I took a picture of just like a fragment of the painting, like the actual paintings like bigger and then Nick did some stuff to it. Yeah, we kind of like manipulated it in Photoshop, but it's actually a collage. It's not just the painting, which is cool. She does a lot of really cool like collage works that's so cool <laughs> oh, that's nice 
I didn't know that. That's it was surprising for me. Yeah, I really like it. I I really like the cassette. It's like one of my favorite ones for the last year. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think even fans love the album. Like for me, like sonically or like in general, like I I find it like really really interesting. And I don't usually listen to a lot of you know slow car or slower rock bands in general, but I really love that one. It's Thank you so much. That's like amazing. Like it, yeah. Thank yeah, you. I, I still remember then, like kind of I took in your field cadets mm. when you self release it, and I really liked that albums, and this one was even better. So I'm excited for the newer stuff. Yeah. And yeah, you are promising a better album, so <laughs> hopefully I didn't hype it up too much. I mean yeah. like, I think it's better. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you yeah. for talking. Definitely I'm looking forward to your new music and hopefully we'll see more stuff from you soon. So and I hope you will do some movie with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you so much this is this is really fun yeah okay thank you guys for watching and thank you for joining us for the first episode and be sure to subscribe to our podcast yes our hangout will be available on podcast as well so you can listen on spotify or apple or whatever streaming platform and you can always find us on youtube so be sure to subscribe so see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.